Here's a map I made some time ago of the Appalachian Trail. And instead of a typical scale bar, instead I used a grid of dots to represent the scale. They're spaced every five miles. Because my challenge was, this is a really long map. How can a scale bar or a series of scale bars really be all that useful in this construct? And so I just did a grid of squares every five miles. And I'll show you how to make the same exact thing. First of all, scale bars are useful, but pretty weird. A static scale bar sits down there in the corner of the map and you like look at it and mentally make a reference and then boop, 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 boop. You know, you kind of translate that scale in your leaky working memory. Or if you're like me, you actually put your finger on the scale bar, boop, and then, you know, actually kind of use it and make measurements like this. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's this long. And oftentimes that's good enough, but you know, could be better. Oh, by the way, I never actually printed this map. I just made it look like it was printed. If you want to learn how the whole thing was made, I'll put a link to a blog post about it in the description below. One of the many, many wonderful things about GIS is that there are so many degrees of freedom to accomplish your goal. That's my way of saying that there is a bunch of different ways to do this. I'm going to show you how to do it in two ways. One option is to insert a grid into your layout. And there are a lot of different options, but you can eventually make it look how you want it to look. Another option is to hack the Generate Tessellation tool. And tessellation is actually the one we're gonna start with. But first things first, I need to set this map's coordinate system to be equal area or equidistant, ideally. Right now it's just Web Mercator. I'm gonna search for equidistant and we'll see what's available in our projected coordinate systems. Continent, North America, USA contiguous equidistant conic. Sounds good to me. Okay, let's bring back that tessellation tool. And you'll want to set the extent to the entirety of your map. In this case, though, I'll just set it to my current display extent. And for the shape type, I'll choose square. And here's a little bit tricky because all of these sizes are in areas, of course, because I'm creating a bunch of squares. If I want every dot to be five miles apart, I need an area that's five by five. So that's 25 square miles, 25 square miles, which results in a grid with a line every five miles. Now these are individual polygons. And so we've got some options here. I could run an analysis tool to put a dot in the centroid of every one of these, but I don't wanna do that because I'm lazy. And it's way easier to open the symbology panel and in the properties of the symbology, I'll go to the structure tab. I'm gonna add a symbol layer called marker layer and I can just get rid of these other symbol layers. Back here, I can apply some rules for the marker placement. Instead of fill polygon, I'll just say at center. So it's going to put a little dot in the middle of every square. It looks like this. Now it's just a matter of styling these dots to look however you want. And now we have a scale based grid reference for our map. So that was the first option, generate tessellation. The other option is to actually insert an honest to goodness, legit grid in my layout. So I'll choose my map frame and I'll go insert grid and this is important choose measured grid instead of graticule so we can actually set a distance so measured grid any of these will work and we'll open up the property for this by double clicking it and i'm first going to uncheck automatically adjust i want to set this myself and i'll go into the components tab and i'll add intersection points that's the thing i want to see dots at all the intersections so i can select this and delete it and delete it and delete it. All we have left is intersection points. By default, we've got these cool NASA moon photo like ticks at regular intervals here. Let's quickly change this, even though the ticks are pretty cool. I'll come to the layers and just for consistency's sake, I'll choose a circle. We'll make it dark blue and four points. But these are not five miles apart from each other. They're currently 10,000 meters apart, so 10 kilometers apart. And I can't change these units because these units are driven by my underlying coordinate system of my map. So I'll Google it. How many meters in five miles? Thank you very much Google. I'll paste it here. Now we have a five mile grid. And the cool thing is if I change my area, I don't have to regenerate a tessellation like the other way. It'll be happy to redraw this grid over the whole world, no matter where I go.
Okay, you got a grid of dots indicating distance, but how does your reader know that? You'll have to give them a little clue about what those dots mean and how far apart they're spaced. In my map, I stuck it on the back cover and gave a little description for five miles, five miles, and about seven miles in between each dot. But have fun with that. So there it is, two options. Which one do you like better? Each has their pros and cons, very few cons, lots of pros. It's good to have options.